So you found the block of land that is absolutely perfect, got the nice views, and you want to build your dream home on it. Great. That's perfect. Well, recently we've been seeing low valuations come in for construction. So today we're gonna to talk about all the things you need to know if you're gonna build and how you can avoid a low valuation. Including one simple tip that could literally save you thousands off your build. Let's dive right in. So when you're building a house, typically you'll buy the land, then you'll go and find the builder, and then once you've got those two things, we'll go to the bank and say, hey guys, can you value these together? The bank will come back and say, hey, here's an as if complete valuation. So let's say for example, the land's 200, the bill's 200, you're hoping that the bank is gonna value the property at 400,000, right? That's right, Jaden. So that's typically how the banks value a land and build scenario. In more recent times, we've actually seen the banks tighten up a little bit and not valuing that property in at 400,000, they're valuing it at 360, 370, 380, which is under what the actual cost is. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. So that difference in the cost out of your pocket of 400,000 and the bank valuation on 360 as an example, means that the bank's only gonna lend you based on a 360 valuation, meaning you need to put more cash up front. Yeah, and this often isn't possible for a lot of first home buyers. You're relying on the first homeowner's grant, you're building in place, even if you're buying an investment, you're like, well, I'm paying 400, the bank thinks it's worth 360, why am I gonna start 40 grand out of pocket from day one? Well, in this video, we're gonna step you through everything you need to know to get through that process and make sure you can come out the other side with a good bank valuation. So the first reason we find a low build valuation is that you haven't included all the essentials. That includes landscaping, fencing, driveway crossover, window treatments, all the essentials that the valuer looks at when they're valuing a property. Yeah, so it's pretty typical for a builder to give you a contract and say, hey, here's a house, but we're not gonna include the curtains, we're not gonna worry about the driveway, don't worry about the landscaping, you kind of manage that yourself. Which is normal and has been fine up until recently where the valuers are saying, well, hey, this property's not complete. And instead of it being worth 400,000, we think it's worth 360 because you've got to spend 10 grand on a driveway and all this other stuff. So make sure you have that up front to increase your chances of not having a low bill valuation. So the second thing to look at when you get a low valuation is actually go through the report. It's surprising how many things that the valuers can actually miss. Example, you're building a four bedroom house, they've compared properties that are three bedroom in the area. You've got a 400 square meter property and they're looking at it as if you've got a 350 square meter property. Yeah, the other one that we actually find that they miss are those inclusions. So say for example, we've actually got the quotes for the driveway or the landscaping or solar panels and the valuer just forgot to include them. So make sure your mortgage broker or your banker has gone through that report and checked everything off with a fine tooth comb. Because the value is a human anyway, they can make mistakes and it can happen. Tip number three is get another valuation. So each bank has different valuers on their panel and they're all selected at random. You've got Heron Todd White, LMW, CBRE, there's a heap of them. So if you've got one valuer that's come out from one firm and you get another opinion from another firm, it's surprising the differences that you can see. Yeah, I had this the other day, Nathan, where a client of mine was buying a block of land in Victoria. Just a normal block of land. We got his bank to value it. It came in at 260,000 when the contract was 288,000. We went back and forth, tried to contest it, and that value was like, nah, it is worth 260, bad luck, they've overpaid. We went to literally the next bank and the next valuer, and it came in at the contract price of 288. It was crazy, but just that difference in opinions can make all the difference for you and actually getting you in your dream home. So the next tip is removing non-essentials from the bill contract. So if you've got porcelain tiles, nice taps, these are things you can change and will reduce the overall build cost. Yes, even stuff like flooring. Maybe you've upgraded the tiles to make them a bit nicer. Maybe you've changed the bench tops in the kitchen. All that stuff can cut back some of the costs. And if you can't get the build valuation up, maybe you can get the cost down and get it a bit closer to work out and get you into that property. And the last tip is to renegotiate with a builder, which could save you thousand or find another builder. I've recently had a customer that had a land and build cost of 400,000 and between three different banks, we had a valuation at 370, 375 and 380. So the customer actually went back to the builder and land developer to let them know of the three valuations that have ensued and asked them to see if they can cut 20 grand in overall costs to make the deal viable. So even at the highest valuation, the deal wasn't viable. So the builder and land developer 
discussed it between themselves and came to an agreement that worked for all parties involved. As a bonus tip, the last thing that we've seen some people do is you might buy the land and just wait for the market to catch up. So you can do that, it's obviously not ideal if you're just sitting on land, it costs you money, but if you have to, it's an option. But that's it for today guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Otherwise, hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au.